I love escaping into a video game, and building and crafting and survival games are among my favourite types of games to play. If you're a regular on my channel then you'll know I'm a fan of games like Ark Survival Evolved, Valheim and Subnautica. But I'm worried about the future of the gaming industry, and it's rare I get excited about very much coming out these days. But I will be going over some of the games that I'm looking forward to in 2022. But the more articles I read, it seems that lots of studios want in on NFTs and cryptocurrency games or games of service. It's all about squeezing every single penny they can out of the gamer. Konami, Square Enix and now Sega are among the latest to announce that they want a piece of the crypto pie. Valve and Steam have recently come out to say that they will not be applying any NFTs or cryptocurrencies on Steam. They recently updated the Steam distribution guidelines specifically saying that no applications built on blockchain technology that issues or allow the exchange of cryptocurrencies or NFTs will be on their platform. The world of NFTs and cryptocurrencies have thus far been fraught with scams and shady dealings and it's possible that Valve doesn't want to be a platform that could put them in legal danger. With the CEO of Studio Wildcard, Doug Kennedy, coming out last year announcing that he's very excited to stick cryptocurrencies and NFTs into his latest project. We're looking at some some other things such as, you know, maybe getting into blockchain, NFTs, um, cryptocurrency, game aspects of things that we might be doing with future projects that we're working on. I'm not saying that we're committed to that, but we're looking at a wide range of things that'll just drive our franchise and build it and make it much bigger and better. I was about to let you go, but you mentioned blockchain and crypto and NFTs. So now it's like, we got to well, hold on, wait a minute. Before we go, wh what are you talking about? What does that have to do with video games? Well, I think that that's what you, you guys should keep an eye on this for. We're the unbelievably unique plan that, uh, that if, if we pull the trigger on, it will be enormous and uh, it will fall right into what I said, blockchain, NFT and cryptocurrency at some date, at some point at a later date. Okay. Perhaps we need to elaborate a little more on what exactly are NFTs and why do so many developers seem so keen to sell them to you and why I personally want nothing to do with them. Without going into super detail in regards to residual taxation and the gas fees, NFTs or non-fungible tokens is a way to create digital rarity. In short, anyone paying for these is essentially buying nothing and it will create a perceived rarity within the game itself or blockchain it's associated with. Let's take the first game that I am looking forward to playing this year, Stalker 2. This isn't the worst scam idea as players or gamers wishing to take part in this particular metaverse would have seen themselves essentially scanned into the game and with over 107,000 people already signed up it would have seen players and fans of the series essentially scanned into the game itself as NPCs. A digital flex, if you will, for the fans of the series to show their support. And perhaps in this sense of the word, they would be getting something back. They have since retracted this, but issued the following statement. Dear Stalkers, we hear you. Based on the feedback we've received, we've made a decision to cancel anything NFT related to Stalker 2. The interest of our fans and players are top priority to the team. We're making this game for you to enjoy, whatever the cost is. If you care, we care too. With love, Game World Team. And in spite of that statement, they still have their D Market page open. I mean, I guess on the whole, I'm not too bothered about this. If you want to pay extra money so I can shoot you in game, I guess I don't really mind. In spite of that though, it does look like a pretty cool game and it was due to be released this March, but it's been pushed back to the end of the year in December. I mean, I welcome it. It's been a good 13 years since the last uh, Stalker game. And if this trailer is anything to go by, it does look pretty cool. I myself won't be featuring any games on this channel that have anything to do with cryptocurrencies or, or bit chain technology or anything like that. And of course, if Studio Wildcard go down that route as well, I won't be featuring anything to do with Ark Survival Evolved 2. If it's going to incentivize people to gamble, or sell that dinosaur that's kind of unique. Perhaps we'll get a nice looking pink T-Rex that can go on the market for a few thousand pound. And this is largely a reason why I'm turning to indie development and indie games. 
They seem to be the only companies at the moment with any integrity. So it looks like we're looking at the smaller indie developments when it comes to innovation. One of the games that I do have on my Steam wish list is Manor Lords. Now the release date for this is still to be announced, but if the pre-alpha footage is anything to go by, I'm really excited by this. It looks like a cross between Settlers and Total War and it really does look like a unique city building game with historical realism and a game that's not in set in any particular century but inspired by historical references. Fields can be ploughed by a team of oxen and sheep can be herded on pastures and governed by the Lord of the Manor. The attention to detail in this game looks really immersive. It's going to have seasons that pass with weather changes and towns that can rise and fall to war and disease and famine. Large scale battles, cavalry, fortifications, units, walls, gunpowder and siege engines. The game is created by a solo developer and I am on their Discord so I have asked a few questions as to when it's going to be announced that they're going to release it in early access but it's definitely something that I'm really excited to play. So Manor Lords is certainly one that I've got on my wish list, and I certainly expect to be playing it on my channel at some point this year. Next up we have the new Settlers game from Ubisoft. This game was due out what feels like two years ago now and there is an open beta that I have signed up for that's on the 20th of January so if I do get in I will no doubt feature it on the channel. Again just like Manor Lords it will be another resource management based city builder. Upon its release it will have three factions to choose from in what promises to have state of the art graphics and a fresh take on the popular series. Deep infrastructure and economy gameplay with various game modes including single player and of course online. The words of the developers will have us believe that the settlers have never been so lively and rich in detail. Powered by Ubisoft's proprietary Snowdrop engine, the settlers sets a new visual benchmark in city building and real time strategy genres. Players will have to adopt their playstyle to expand their landmarks and special rewards for the new biomes and their challenges. It's been a long time since I've played a decent Settlers game and if the team at Ubisoft managed to pull this one off then I'll be happy to escape into this world and sink hours of my time. But if they can't then perhaps Manor Lords will. And if Studio Wildcard go ahead with their plans to make Ark 2 a blockchain based game then I can't bring myself to play it on the channel. Just because I've built a channel around a game that I love, I'm not going to support their shady practices if they go ahead with this. Ark was once a game that was in early access and I was one of the players that bought Scorched Earth, a DLC for a game that wasn't even finished at the time. But I did it to try and save a game that had found itself in financial trouble on a legal case. Of course I'd love to hear all of your opinions down below in the comments. I'd like to thank all of my patrons for your kind support, of course this makes any of the content I put out on YouTube slightly viable. And if you'd like to support me further then I will be making a return to Twitch where I'll be testing out some new games. Streaming is something I've missed and I'd like to get back into a swing of doing a regular pattern on Twitch and perhaps we can continue this discussion over there. But until next time I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see ya.